This is Social Inclusion Week and to tell us more about an event they are holding, I have on the line Fiona Doherty, Service Manager with Advocates for Personal Potential Training Services. Welcome to Voices of Any Show on Fiona. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anne. The opportunity to chat to you this morning, yes. And uh, uh, the the event is a free information evening uh, or event uh, offering information around the theme of adults and autism, Asperger's and mental health. Yeah, and what we're actually doing today with the week that's in it is we're, we're organising um, two open days where people are free to come in and chat to ourselves and our staff and the team and I guess highlight the, the service that we offer to those people who... who um, suffer mental health difficulties and also those who are on the autism spectrum disorders. Um, We currently have two bases, one in Letterkenny and one in Ballyshannon, from which we deliver um, an outreach program in the general geographical area of County Donegal, um, North Leitrim, North Sligo areas. Um, It's it's just, I suppose, this morning taking the opportunity to extend an invitation to any of those who feel or who are around to have the opportunity to come in and um, ask any questions, gather, gather some information um, so they can take with them and an awareness of, of the type of service that we offer as well. And the event is being held in your Letterkenny offices, I understand. That's right, yes, on New Line Road um, today from 11 to 3. And in Valley Shannon, it's in the same court centre. It's in the main street, the second floor there tomorrow, again from uh, 11 to 3. So um, pop in, meet the staff, I suppose, get an insight into what we do. I guess we're... Um, we're unique in a sense that we offer an outreach programme, which, again, is very person-centred, which I mean there is it's in relation to um, people's needs. And we work from that base and go forward and link into community services, link into professional services and link into the area so that we can um, achieve the um, goals that people have set out for themselves as well as support them in new opportunities and active citizenship and doing uh, everyday activities that possibly is posing a little bit of difficulty for some people at the moment. Um, you know, anything from uh, going around to the shops, setting up their own home, going through education. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's very broad, but again, it's based on where the person's at and what goals or what problems they have for themselves for the future. So it's like a, a mentoring service for someone who has uh, suffered a, a mental health difficulty? Yes, you see, yeah, you, you you sort of take time to get to know the person, get to know their, their situation, get to know their environment, get to know what their likes and their dislikes is. And you, you, you build up a rapport there in a sense that you get a feel for, well, this person maybe would like to be able to get involved in activities locally, would like to be able to, I guess, um, build their confidence, I guess, maybe try new things and experience um, different areas that they may have thought about doing for a while. And it's just given them the opportunity and the support from staff or those like their natural support networks is that in the community, just maybe to pay a visit to, to um, a centre or a college or something so you can link with the support staff that are in, in there as well. And again, it's, it's learning by doing. It's learning by... Um, experiencing those areas that the person may wish to work in. And so your methods are a, a combination of sort of hands-on experience and research into sort of how to develop quality of, of life practices. Yes, we are up and running since um, 2004, initially in the Valley Shannon Centre, or the Valley Shannon base. And we took on board then the Asperger's programme from 2006. And it's been very successful as regards um, the, the scope and the range of, of activities that our, that our members have been involved in and are still currently successful in. And yes, we, we give various areas of support. We're there for the individual on a needs basis until the person is quite comfortable themselves in doing whatever the task is to hand. But we're still there in the background because you can gradually pull back once the person is quite comfortable in doing the task. That could be simply um, <clears throat> taking a bus from A to B, uh, going and purchasing some goods, 
and either linking into if they are at school or college or even the work environment through work placements and stuff until they build up a rapport with the people that surround them. Again, a lot of it as well is, is confidence building in those situations, being able to ask for help, being able to acknowledge that there is a little bit of difficulty there. And I guess as well, being able to acknowledge that, no, this is not for me, or yes, I would like to try this, kind of getting to know their own condition, getting to know their um, triggers, getting to know the environment around them so that they can feel more comfortable in themselves then and, and moving forward. You also offer help to children or young adults who are on the autistic spectrum, um, particularly as you know as they are sort of moving from that childhood stage you know, into being young adults around the age of 18. Pe- parents are often concerned about what's going to happen then. Yes, and, and I guess that, that's the same with, with any family, to be fair, that their, their sons or daughters are moving into that, that age category as such. Um, we have an adult service from 18 years upwards, and, you know, there's a little bit of apprehension there but uh, uh, for everyone. And what we actually do is on meeting the um, individual, we also get a chance to meet with their families as well. And our staff, you know, would liaise with everyone in areas like that. You know, it could be just, there could be an element of fear there initially. But once, I guess, um, everyone sees that there's an air of support that can be worked worked on, in the sense that they have a companion to go from A to B, they possibly when they do get to that situation, they may find that there's a friend there or someone there that they know from before. And again, it could simply be that, uh, parents and even the, their siblings just to have someone to talk over those uh, emotional areas that they feel may be difficult but uh, as I say before um, it's amazing when when you are out working with people how they can um, progress let's say by doing the actual activities you know they, they, they become familiar with their surroundings become familiar with their uh, networks around them for support and the communication and quite a lot of other areas develop then as well as a result of that. So, you know, we're we're there as a, a listening ear. And again, um, you know, we're a link on then to all the other either professionals or other services if we feel that that's required for the situation as well. So you see yourself as becoming a friend to both the individual and the, and the family? In a way, yes. I think it, it has been described from uh, someone in the past by saying that we're, we're um, as much an advocate, but we're like a professional friend in that sense. I really, to be perfectly honest, the key is that you take time with the individual, you take time to listen, you take time to <clears throat> research and look at what's out there. And it's, it's um, yeah, I don't think you can ever say that you can pinpoint the actual day where you feel that someone would be able to to do things for themselves. You have to you have to watch as they progress, and you have to have adequate support there for them, and in, in, in situations that need it requires it. Yeah. Uh, but your method is very much based around developing and and engaging with the individual to create a personal plan for their future. That's right. Yes, it's person centred. It's based around their needs. Um, it's, it's a case of where they draw up and plan for themselves. We start off on areas that they maybe sim- simply wish to um, develop, first of all, or the simpler tasks on hand. You know, everyone has a picture of where they would like um, people to be, but really you have to start with the person themselves that they fully understand where they are and how they can fit into this bigger picture or wider picture. They may, through the time on, on in some of their planning areas, they may feel that, they, they want to do something, but through the planning and the developing and the researching and, and opening up the opportunities for them to develop it, they may see that it's maybe a little bit too difficult for them, or maybe they may alter from that and go to a simpler form initially. I'm talking very broad here at the moment, Anne, to be fair, but, um, you know, it, it develops as it, as it progresses. We review it, we come back, um, people change their minds, people have different options. You know, it's it's very much um, person centred in, in that way, and of course, you take on board then um, families and where they see that this person, their individual son or daughter's plans, can fit in with their schedule. And I guess it's very much as well looking at the emotional side and the practical side. 
of, of how we can achieve it. So you take note of how the individuals are responding and you know yes. look at their behaviour and see how comfortable yes. they are with yes. what's yes. being suggested. Yes. All behaviours really is a form of communication in the sense that, you know, you can you can get anxiety, you can get tension, you can get frustrations and stuff. And I guess it's a case for the person to realise when that's building up that that there's something not right or there's something that could be improved, let's say. So it's it's um, working through those, it's developing that, it's putting all the little key areas in place so that we can reduce that. And again, it's, it's learning by doing on behalf of the person themselves. So if people, well, obviously you've got the uh, information days today and tomorrow, mm-hmm. um, but if people can't get along to those and they want to find out more about the services that you can offer and the help that you can give, mm-hmm. how can they go about doing that? Well, we have a webpage, www.appts.ie, or we have an email, info at appts.ie, and they can um, surely drop us a line uh, via that method, or else we have um, our main office number, and letter Kenny, 074-911-3661, or Bally Shannon, 071-985-2908. And do you work with any of the sort of, you know, centres in the, you know, in the community, such as, you know, Cash and Core here in, in the show and, uh, you know, and helping people who use those facilities to, you know, develop their potential? Uh, um, we, were, we are aware, yes, we're aware of all the other services that's there, but we wouldn't directly be involved um, with the centres themselves as regards. Um, we would work with the core people that, that, we have within our program and we would link out into the likes of the the broader services within the communities to um utilize what what is what is in those areas like schools colleges local transport um housing areas stuff like that we wouldn't be uh, overlapping into other um service centers as such Okay, Fiona. Well, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining okay. us today, and um, I hope your event is a big success. Thank you very much, Anne. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.